It's now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining today's webinar focused on refrigeration, the third of a series of five webinars that's going on the whole week. Um, before listening to our two panelists, Today, I want to remind you that this webinar was designed for mainly for participants in the Efficiency for Access uh, Design Challenge, an Efficiency for Access and Engineers Without Borders initiative. Um, nonetheless, if you're uh, not from the competition, you're still welcome to listen to our two um, speakers. Uh, throughout the whole webinar, please do type your questions in the question box uh, in the go to webinar window on the right of your screen. Uh, and we will uh, tackle these questions uh, during the Q&A session at the end uh, of this webinar. Uh, I also want to remind everybody that the webinar will be recorded and made available on the Efficiency for Access Design Challenge website. Um, so our two speakers today will talk about refrigeration, a very important field in the off-grid sector. So first, uh, we'll be hearing uh, from Harini, who uh, is a battery research lead at MCOPA. So Harini has a strong background working in the energy storage space, having managed several academic and industrial research projects. She's completed a PhD in battery research at Imperial College London, and uh, as I said, she's currently uh, working for MCOPA Labs, the uh, research and development arm of MCOPA Solar. For those who don't know MCOPA Solar, um, it is a global leader in the pay-as-you-go off-grid solar industry, having connected um, so far over 750,000 households across Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, we'll then hear from Victor, who has studied mechanical engineering in Madrid, Spain, um, and moved to Germany in 2004, where he worked eight years for Mercedes-Benz in Stuttgart. In 2012, he joined the Institute of Agricultural Engineering of the University of Hohenheim, where he has, he's carried out his PhD studies in the field of refrigeration and solar energy. Since 2015, he coordinated research projects for the pilot testing of solar cooling systems in rural areas of the tropics and subtropics. And he founded uh, in 2018 the spin-off company Solar Cooling Engineering, which supports the local production of medium-scale solar cooling system able to be adapted to different agricultural value chains by local companies and stakeholders. And I'm sure he'll tell us more about it. Um, I'm now leaving the floor to Harini. Don't forget to ask your questions throughout the webinar in the question box. Thank you. Great, thank you very much for um, the introduction, Theo. Um, great, if you can get to the next slide. Perfect. Um, Great, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm, I'm looking forward um, to the discussions after um, after these talks. So, um, so if we're going to talk about refrigeration, I think we need to take a step back and ask ourselves why why are we doing this in the off grid space? And um, and I guess refrigeration is just another um, is is a key vector to address some of the sustainable development goals. Um, and we just listed here some um, some of the issues that we're trying to tackle or some of the benefits uh, that we're trying to provide. But I guess um, having access to, um, to refrigeration and whether it's from um, for individuals or for uh, small businesses, it just helps save valuable time spent um, daily going to markets and acquiring the food. Um, but also can provide um, a potential increase, so as a increased productivity of these people who will use um, their fridge as um, as an asset in their shop or start a business thanks to it. I guess also um, it enables people to buy um, fre fresh food that they can then um, keep and not and for it not to perish, um, so offer them more flexibility. Um, as well as save them time um, to do other things. And I will come back to it later in the presentation, but for example, for parents to spend more time with their children, especially help them with their education. Um, 
what we see in our current market at MCOBA as well is that um, the, the predominant kind of user and manager uh, say of of the fridge um, of the fridge asset is um, is women, and they tend to be the one who would go to the shops and then would cook and would take care of all um, you know to all the all that chain, and it um, it help it empowers them, it helps them manage their time better as well. Um, and um, finally, I guess one of the things worth mentioning is that. Um, fridges also helps improve um, these people's quality of living. Um, having access to lighting is great and is the first step on the energy ladder, but having access to appliances um, is really what helps um, these communities to, to change their, their quality of life. Um, great, um, next slide. So having said that, so what um, these are some of the, I guess, the numbers um, that we collected over time through um, through MCOBA's experiences of dealing um, with fridge for low-income population. And like I said, um, what we really see in terms of savings, for example, is um, savings thanks to bulk buying, um, thanks to reduced market visits, savings in time as well in terms of cooking and um, having less food uh, being um, going off essentially. But um, one of the things I didn't mention is also that this can help with medical apl um, applications as well. So as is mentioned here, um, uh, type 2 diabetes impact 1 in 17 Kenyans and they need uh, proper, um, proper storage, proper cooling uh, for their insulin so that they can use um, solar fridges for, for that purpose. Um, and and finally, what we also saw is that some people have this dual use of the fridge, so they might be initially purchasing um, purchasing it for for a personal use, but then find the opportunity to also sell, say, uh, cold drinks, um, or then um, if not, go and would get a, a second access for um, for their shops. Um, next slide. Thank you. Um, so th these are more of some of uh, the numbers that we um, that I just described. So um, I just put this in here as you'll probably have access to these slides and then you can refer back um, to this market study. But yes, so this is attested in the region of Kisumu, Siena, and Machakus with some of our first um, fridge pilots at MCOPA. Um, and and we have um, and we have been able to quantify uh, savings in terms of Kenyan shillings and saving in terms of hours um, for those customers. Um, next slide. Thank you. So what's currently available in the market? And um, I'm sure we'll hear more about this from uh, from Victor and the, the solution that they offer. But I guess the the challenge um, often with refrigeration in the um, for low income population, especially in the off grid space, is that you either have uh, an option that is tailored for off -grid, off, off grid application, but it will possibly be very expensive because it will be very bespoke. And um, so for example, um, what, what one of um, one of the available options is a sure chill. Um, and they would produce um, medical grade fridges, I believe, that can be put in, in hospitals as well. And the way they, they cool it is using um, essentially a, a, a water-based um, uh, coolant that they would freeze and would be sitting um, in, in the cabinet. So that, that does work and it's really important, especially for medical grade fridges, that the temperature is always constant and doesn't fluctuate. Uh, and I guess that offers that, but it is a bulky solution um, and can be a, quite an expensive one for um, household usage. Uh, and I guess the alternative to that is just your standard fridge that you would buy in a shop that you could also find in um, in shops um, in Sub-Saharan Africa, but those ones would be designed um, to be plugged into a house that's connected to the grid and would require having an inverter and also would be high a high consumption fridge it wouldn't be optimized um, for off-grid use 
So there are a few options available as well as um, as MCOPAs, and there are various sizes of fridges available as well, I guess up to 150 liters. Um, next slide. Um, but I guess in terms of what are the current challenges with the offering, so like I said, there's also, um, so as well as um, not having an optimized, um, an optimized and cheap solution for off-grid application. One of the key issue is um, the lack of financing. So, um, so you will have a high value device that people cannot afford um, and there will be no, um, no financing scheme uh, for those people to be able to, um, to start using these appliances. Uh, another challenge uh, that we face as well is um, a fridge, unlike other type of off-grid appliances, say like lights or a fan or a TV, um, needs to be operated 24/7. So um, I think as a as a company that was um, that was a very interesting challenge. As usually, you give customers a device that would have um, a battery for for storing the energy coming from um, from the solar panels. And then when the battery ran out, that's, um, that's it for the customer for that day. That's as much lighting as as much hours of TV watching that they would get. But for a fridge, um, that, that wouldn't be good enough because suddenly um, all, all the food would be, um, would go off by um, once the, if the, if the battery ever reached fully discharged state. Um, so, so it is an interesting design challenge for us to be able to uh, to size the batteries and the solar panel accordingly, so we can always guarantee 24/7 operation. Uh, but having to do that also means that your oh yeah thank you <laughs> that the product becomes more expensive as um, as you need to oversize both panel and, and battery that also um, that that also impacts obviously access to that appliances to a wider range of people. Uh, another challenge is uh, compressors. So I'll come back um, to it in a in a little bit. Where um, compressors um, um, would consume a lot of energy and wouldn't be optimized for off grid fridges. Um, so so we have um, we have come around that problem, M Copa. Um, and next slide, thank you. Um, and currently what we're offering to our customers is a 100 litre solar fridge. So we guarantee 36 hours of battery autonomy, um, so about a day and a half. And, um, and that would be at extremely low power. Um, so as you can see, the, the daily energy used by uh, Amcopa solar fridge um, is less than a 60 watt light bulb. Um, and so I put some extra details here so you can refer to it um, later on in your projects if needed, but the type of insulation that we use and the refrigerant that we use. Uh, and in terms of cabinet internal temperature, we try to keep it at six degrees. Um, and the reason behind that um, was that with our uh, manufacturing partners and Braco, um, who manufacture our compressors, um, we, we decided that six degrees was the compromise we were able to make in terms of you know the type of bacteria that develop if we if we were to put a temperature above that uh, versus the the type of bacteria that would develop um, at, at this temperature. Anyway, um, thank you. Next slide. So, um, like I mentioned, for um, for the compressors, so this is a, a graph showing what kind of compressor we use in Copa and uh, standard compressors. So as as you can see here, for a standard compressor, um, you have this initial um, this initial startup peak, um, and that that means that um, you need to oversize the electronics so you can handle such a surge. And what you see for uh, the wise motion compressor that's manufactured by Embraco is that you kind of shave off that peak. But you also shave up that second um, that second bump, so it's a much more homogeneous um, uh, consumption of power um, that that is more, 
I guess, more efficient and effective, but also enables us to kind of downsize our electronics and make our product cheaper. Next slide. Um, so this is um, actually what we observe in the market. Um, so we, so at MCOPA, so we, once we deploy our devices, um, we have the ability to remotely collect data um, daily from uh, from those devices. So, so we can use that data for several applications, um, mostly to understand customer behavior, um, individual customer behavior, as well as population customer behavior, but also uh, to enable us um, improve our products so we can uh, we can do a, a more a more human centric uh, design. So um, so once we have uh, once we had our larger pilot. So here we're talking about 43, uh, 43 devices, and this is data from I believe um, 2018. Uh, we were able to to kind of see okay how how does all those devices behave in terms of charging and discharging. And what you can see here is um, over the course of 24 hours, um, what what does um, the kind of drain on the battery looks like? And the, the battery is the key component here as that's what's guaranteed um, having, um, you know, 36 hours of, um, of uh, powering capabilities. So what you see um, in the night hours is that it's kind of draining the battery and once the sun's come up, uh, it charges up and then um, it stays charged up uh, until the sun goes down and then it starts draining, uh, draining the battery again. So what, what you'd be able to see is like all of this is kind of in the, in the top third of this graph. And that's because we've deliberately over, oversized our battery. So in case say that one day the panel broke down, um, that customer would still get um, enough autonomy until you know we can provide them a replacement panel or they can go to a shop and fix that issue. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, next slide. Um, so what are our lessons learned from our multiple pilots and um, then our commercial um, our commercial offering? So one of the things uh, that we learned quite early on after our first pilot is that fridge size is really important. So the picture that you see here is one of the initial fridges um, that we, we trialed out. Um, and that's a 47 litre fridge. And it, when you do your customer research and you ask them, say, oh, do you think that would be enough? People would say yes. Uh, but once, um, once it would be in their homes, you realize that actually that is not at all what they wanted or and not because they feel like they, there isn't enough space to store all their goods, but more like that is not what they imagine um, their fridge to be like. Um, so, so that's when we, we change our offering from 47 liters to 100 liters. Uh, as I said, um, you know, how to best uh, size solar panel and battery, um, we have to find a compromise between being able to give as much autonomy as possible um, so we absolutely avoid our fridges switching off but also uh, keeping the cost down so more people can have access um, to, to, to the fridges. Um, and, and talking about costs, I guess it's worth mentioning um, that MCOPA um, does offer um, a flexible financing model. So for our fridge customers, they will be giving us a deposit and then we will be collecting daily payments from them until they repay, um, they repay the full product. Um, but obviously the more expensive uh, the fridge is um, as a product, the, the larger that deposit is gonna have to be for us as well to ensure that our customers will be able to repay the rest of their loan. Um, so, so that is um, that is one of the the biggest challenge we had originally, and one that we're still working on um, to make that program available to more people. Um, yeah, and fine. Uh, and I guess the final uh, point on this slide is that um, custom education, um, helping them understand how um, how to how to use um, how to use the fridge 
what to do and not to do. Um, so if you go to the next slide. Um, so I guess one of the things, so this is, um, this is kind of more detailed data that we collected from a fridge in a, in kind of lab conditions. But um, what, what you see here um, is um, that the evaporator is the, is the coolest part of the fridge. And, um, and I guess um, it, it cools down when the compressor, um, when the compressor is on. And if you go to the next slide, Thank you. Um, what you see is like what you saw before is like a kind of like typical normal behavior if like nothing happens. But then suddenly if you start, op you know, using the fridge, everything changes. So if you start opening the door or if you start putting hot food into the fridge, suddenly you, you need your compressor to be on for much longer. So although we have a really efficient compressor, we also don't want it to be on constantly because otherwise um, that that um, that totally changes these calculations that we have done for 36 hours of of autonomy, um, and suddenly you'd be putting um, the autonomy of, of the fridge at risk. Say if you were systematically throughout the day putting hot food in it, because you'd be ma making your system work harder. Um, so uh, next slide. Um, yeah, so I guess this brings me to the end of my presentation now. Um, so in terms of where uh, the market is going, where what are the kind of upcoming um, projects happening? So our partner, Embraco, which is part of the Whirlpool Group, and DFID, and with the help of the Shell Foundation as well, um, we're just putting out these features, but we know that Embraco are also working uh, with other off-grid um, suppliers to make um, solar fridges more affordable and offer them um, with a pay-as-you-go um, service to customers. Um, so yes, thank you all for listening and I hope I will get some questions from you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Harini. Um, very interesting. So wrong contact, obviously. <laughs> um, we're now going to move to the next presentation. Um, so Victor, if you're willing to, to take up the floor, it's yours. Thank you very much for the introduction and also for the opportunity to be here. It has been a pleasure to, to hear the presentation of Harini. Uh, also, and I think my presentation now, if you go to the next slide, is going to um, um, go more, more in the direction of uh, productive use. Um, so I would like to uh, give you an overview first of the university I come from. If you please move to the next slide. Um, we work, I mean, we are based in, in southern Germany, near Stuttgart, um, and are in the um, University of Hohenheim uh, within the group of, uh, in the Institute of Agriculture and Engineering, and they are uh, in the group of tropics and subtropics. We are around 25 uh, persons working there from uh, many different countries, uh, dealing with projects uh, almost uh, always abroad. Um, I just wanted to give you an overview of the topics we deal with, not only solar cooling, also solar uh, drying, irrigation, oil extraction, and in general, post harvest technologies. Uh, if you move to the next slide, please, I would like to give you an overview of the solar cooling team there. Uh, we are around um, two engineers, um, followed by uh, three PhD students um, at the moment, uh, social uh, scientific, uh, scientific, sorry, and uh, around uh, two students uh, at the moment, so eight, eight people uh, working on this. And if you go to the next slide, I would like to give you a small a overview of our facilities. I think Herini also talked about their lab, how to test um, uh, refrigerators or in general solar cooling systems. Uh, I think she talks already on the importance uh, on the cooling load. You have seen it also in the in the diagram, she, ha she has shown how, it imp how important it is or how the consumption in increase when you put inside the refrigerator a uh, hot food or when you are opening the, the door. I would like to add here that it is also very important to uh, simulate the ambient temperature. Um, 
and because the efficiency of a refrigerator decreases a lot um, when the ambient temperature increase and also the thermal losses uh, increase as you can imagine and um, um, it is not only important to uh, simulate the, um, the ambient temperature while you are testing it is also important to simulate the, um, the power that you are getting from the PV panels from the solar panels and that's why we use here a PV simulator because you can imagine uh, during the hours where it is hot you have solar energy but you have also a lower efficiency and at night you are getting the energy from the battery but you have a better efficiency so it, it uh, somehow compensates. Um, next slide please. I would like to uh, tell you a little bit on the work we have been done, uh, doing in the last years. Uh, we have tried to adapt a local available components, in this case a, a solar refrigerator, to work as a, a, a small scale a milk cooling, solar milk cooling system. So on the uh, left side, on, on top, you can see how the system looks like with the PV panels. Uh, and the refrigerator that has been adapted to work as an ice maker. You see also the, uh, the uh, milk cans and on the right side you see uh, the modifications that we did to this refrigerator. We needed to use a fan to increase the, the heat transfer uh, to be able to, to produce uh, around 16 kilogram ice per day the refrigerator or in this case the, the ice maker can store a uh, 50 kilogram ice and another modification that we need to do is a uh, is a control unit that is able to know if it's sunny or not because during the uh, solar radiation hours the compressor is working at maximum power and during night uh, we use the energy on the batteries in in, in an efficient way or even in an in a sleep mode. I will tell you a little bit um, uh, uh, about that, a little bit more uh, about that later. Um, in the bottom side on the left, you see um, how our insulated milk cans uh, look like with a nice compartment. So this system has been used at pharma, uh, pharma groups and cooperative level. Um, and uh, you can see um, how the, the milk is uh, introducing the milk can after milking uh, conventional milk cans and then the, the ice compartment where we uh, put the ice inside and then you see in the bottom uh, right side how the milk is cooled down uh, during transportation or uh, during night at, at a farmer level or cooperatives uh, up to 16 hours. So the system was designed for 60 liter milk. Um, next slide, please. We have implemented this technology in uh, three different countries. So we have around uh, 19 systems. Um, uh, by the way, we were also in Kisumu um, uh, in Kenya with the last systems. Um, we started in Tunisia in 2016. Um, in Colombia, for example, we were using a local manufacturer a local manufacturing for the milk cans and ice compartments um, and in Kenya the second two systems that were installed um, two years ago they have been introduced with a, a payment system so that we could assess the, the willingness to pay of uh, such a technology. Next slide please. Um, we have found out uh, also a couple of challenges, uh, same as, as Arini, and I would like to summarize them to you. Uh, the first of them um, and the, on the left side on top uh, is the fact that donations uh, influence uh, the willingness to pay in, in a high degree. Um, I don't know what is the experience of Harina, Harini uh, and M M Copa, but we have found many farmers that uh, own already an AC refrigerator uh, that has been donated, for example, so it's difficult to, um, to explain to users um, uh, how our uh, how a business model would look like if they are used to uh, to donations. So what we have started to do is to rotate the pilot systems 
uh, from farm to farm so that they just uh, find out if they can uh, generate income out of the uh, a better milk quality um, and uh, as soon as they are um, happy with the technology introducing uh, fees uh, so that we could assess the, the willingness to pay and motivate also local uh, companies to to uh, start supplying the, the technology providing maintenance. Uh, then I come to the second point on the uh, top right side uh, about maintenance um, which have also um, have found out that it's very important to, to uh, support the customers on the way how they use uh, sol solar cooling systems uh, and uh, also I think this is a, a, a general factor in the off-grid sector as soon as um, something breaks then nobody knows anymore if it's PV, panel, batteries or refrigerator um, has the failure so for that uh, we need um, local distribution and maintenance and we are supporting at the moment also local assembling and, and production. Um, on the uh, left uh, bottom side I would like to mention that transport cost of the technology is, um, is a very, very a high factor in the in the cost of the technology, especially I think in the case of Mcopa um, is relative if the the product is produced in in Kenya directly, but in our case uh, the transport costs from from Europe to to Kenya was very high, and also the uh, profit margins of distributors coming from the capital to rural areas this was um, um, yeah, representing 60% uh, of the total cost of the technology. And the last uh, challenge uh, is that sometimes the product doesn't fit into the local market so uh, you can imagine if you are offering a, a solar milk cooling system um, in our case for 60 liter uh, per day this would be a, a very big system for a farmer um, for a pharma group it could work and for a cooperative it might be small so we need also to work in several system configurations different sizes uh, so that we assure that once we enter the market we can um, <clears throat> deal with as many customers uh, as possible. Next slide please. And therefore we have changed um, a little bit our approach and we have decided to promote the use of solar cooling units instead of cooling systems. You can see here uh, the PV panel and the uh, uh, refrigeration machine. Um, Harini talks before about the evaporator which is the coldest um, a part of, um, of a, um, a refrigerator. So this will be this uh, white plate that you see and the compressor um, so we are supporting the use of these cooling units to produce um, a different um, a solar cooling systems that I would like to show you in the next slide. So with this uh, cooling unit you can see um, you just need to produce uh, the, the insulation uh, box um, um, integrate the cooling unit and um, you see here um, you can easily produce an, an ice maker. So we have already introduced uh, our uh, local produce uh, ice makers uh, and as you can imagine you can um, extend the, the system as, and make it as big as you need uh, by installing several cooling units uh, in, in parallel so to say. In the next slide I would like to tell you about the different configurations that you can do. I just mentioned uh, the ice makers. So with one uh, cooling unit uh, you can produce an ice maker uh, able to, to deliver 15 kilogram ice per day that you can use for example to cool down 40 liter milk per day or 80 kilogram fish per day. Uh, in the second uh, case you see um, the refrigerators. Uh, with one cooling unit you can produce a refrigerator up to 180 liter volume uh, that can cool down around 20 kilogram food per day. Uh, this depends of course a lot on the design parameters and it depends also a lot if your refrigerator is having a battery or, or having an ice storage. Our cooling units uh, support uh, the, the, the use of both. 
And uh, the third configuration will be uh, our uh, water chillers. So in this case, the evaporator plate is uh, immersed in water. Uh, so it's able to produce um, uh, cold water um, and, and it is stored the energy in, an, in a big ice block. Uh, so you have here um, a battery free or a system with battery that is able to produce 2.5 kilowatts hour per day. And this is uh, enough to cool down 80 liter of milk per day in a water bath or even deliver a cold energy for cold rooms. Uh, and per cooling unit, you can deal with the small cold rooms starting from uh, six uh, cubic meters. Next slide, please. In order to assure the technology transfer, we uh, founded a, a company last year that is called uh, Solar Cooling Engineering. Uh, it will be great if you can uh, visit our site. We have also there are some videos uh, on how to produce uh, the, the solar solar cooling systems, and we offer from uh, from the company engineering services uh, key components as the the, the cooling units um, and are very active at the moment giving uh, technical training courses and uh, supporting pilot testing of our partners in different countries. And in the next slide, next slide please. <laughs> Uh, I would like to give you a couple details on the solar cooling unit that is distributed by the company uh, Faisan uh, here in Germany. Um, I have told you already about the advantages of creating your own refrigerator uh, refrigeration system. You have also the advantage that you have a very low transport cost to rural areas. Uh, it is also duty free in most countries because it is an industrial component. It is compatible uh, with battery free um, uh, systems. We also use a um, natural refrigerant R R600A as, um, the, as the one from, from Encopa. I think this is very important because as you know, uh, other refrigerants has a um, uh, global warming potential. Um, and this is not the case in, in, in with this refrigerant, and it is very important because I think it's um, it's not so so good to promote a, a solar refrigerators that don't use a natural refrigerants uh, because uh, with the um, um, global warming effect that the refrigerant can have in the environment, then you destroy uh, the climate friendly. Um, aspects of, of, of the, those technologies. Um, so if you will go please to the next slide. I would like to give you now an overview on uh, how we think that a solar power refrigerate, refrigerator uh, should be designed. Uh, uh, a couple of aspects were already uh, mentioned by Harini, but I will say the product uh, uh, requirements, uh, the cooling requirements are very important. So you need to, we need to understand if the product uh, we want to cool down uh, needs a temperature of six degrees or 10 degrees or two degrees, uh, or also how many hours the product can be without refrigeration or with temperature fluctuations. Um, so this is a very, very important uh, aspect. The second one will be to understand the value chain context and the demand of final users. Uh, Harini already mentioned uh, how important is the volume of the refrigeration, refrigerator for ho household uh, users. Uh, for other users, for example, farmers uh, perhaps uh, will be different. They would like to, to have more cooling capacity, for example, or other uh, aspects. It is also important to think about the refrigeration method. If you are using vapor compression um, uh, machines, or you can use uh, other uh, refrigeration uh, uh, methods in the market. Uh, also to assess the energy demand. So what are your thermal losses? What is the ambient temperature in the uh, locations you are you are working? Uh, and what is the cooling demand? Is the user going to cool down uh, 10 kilogram uh, food per day or perhaps 20 or how are the fluctuations? This is very important to, to design uh, the battery and the PV panels or even the ice storage and also the energy supply configuration. If you are having um, a battery free system um, or a conventional um, um, a PV battery um, solar system.
In the next slide, I would like to give you an overview of what's happened with the milk quality. Uh, just to talk to you about the cooling requirements of some products, I think that this, I think that the sample of raw milk is very, very interesting because milk has a temperature of uh, 37 degrees after milking, and the bacteria grows very fast at this temperature, as you can see in the red line. Uh, you see here time after milking and um, how the bacteria uh, grows on that time. So you see in around uh, two to three hours, you are over the uh, limits um, in Kenya, for example, of two million bacteria per milliliter. Um, and um, this is what we often uh, find in rural areas that the uh, bacteria count level of raw milk uh, at milk collecting center is around um, yeah, five, five to 10 million. Uh, and this means, um, especially for milk, uh, the importance of being able to cool down at farm level, uh, it's very high. From the other side, if you have a look uh, to the other curves, so 20 degrees, 15, and even 10 degrees, with 10 degrees, you can already store your milk for 24 hours uh, without a significant uh, growth of bacteria. So this is important to understand so that you know from one side you need to cool down your milk very fast in less than two hours. And if you want to store for 24 hours, you need to go around 10 degrees or below. Next slide, please. Here, um, I would like to, to give you an overview of the different refrigeration uh, methods uh, that you can find in the market. Uh, I don't want to go through all of them, but uh, perhaps uh, some promising uh, methods uh, as thermoelectric, uh, Peltier elements are getting more um, uh, popular for refrigerators. Evaporative cooling can be also an, op an option for uh, refrigeration systems in dry regions and uh, vapor compression heat pumps that uh, you cannot see there. So it's the a red box where you cannot see um, the, the, yeah, the, the sentences, the words, sorry. Um, uh, there uh, you can find the, the heat pumps, uh, vapor compression systems. Those are the systems that, that you find in refrigerators uh, with a compressor and so on. Uh, but there are also other options. For example, if you have access to biogas, uh, you can think about using absorption uh, um, uh, uh, refrigeration machines that work uh, with heat instead of electricity. So just to, for you to have this overview, and if you go please to next slide. Here I would like to uh, let you know a little bit about uh, the cooling performance of heat pumps. So we go back to the um, uh, refrigeration machines that are normally used for refrigerators. And I would like to um, tell you a little bit about the coefficient of performance. This is the relationship between the um, the heat that is extracted from, from the refrigerator, so to say the cold energy that is extracted um, um, divided by the electricity that you consume. And in the bottom you can see um, a, a table where you see if you have a refrigerator operating at 4 degrees and 20 degrees ambient temperature, so 4 degrees inside and 20 outside, you have a COP of 2.6. This means if you are consuming a one watt of electricity, you produce 2.6 watts of cold energy. Uh, and from the other side, um, if you see at 40 degrees, it will decrease to 1.8. Um, and if you go to minus 10 degrees and 40 degrees outside, you will be at 1.1. So uh, those uh, uh, refrigeration machines, uh, I mean heat pumps, um, are, are very efficient because you produce almost always more uh, cold energy than the, than, than the electricity that you consume. So just to give you an example, if you have an a PV panel with an efficiency of 17% uh, and your heat pump is working at 2.1 uh, uh, COP, then you have 35% uh, of the solar radiation you are able to convert into cold energy. So um, it's a very a promising technology to be used in combination with solar energy. And in the next slide, 
I would like to show you again this effect. So if you see on the uh, right uh, uh, side, the graph, this is the energy consumption of a refrigerator or in this case a freezer that is producing uh, six, uh, is freezing six liter uh, water from 20 degrees to minus 10. And there you see the energy consumption at 20, 30 and 40 degrees. And you can observe how the energy consumption is uh, two times higher when you have 40 degrees uh, ambient temperature. So it's very important to um, consider both uh, thermal losses and, and cooling demand to have the right design of the PV uh, batteries and, and ice storage. And in the next slide, uh, I would uh, like to, um, to talk to you about uh, the interesting uh, combination of ice storage and, uh, uh, and batteries. So you see there in the graph on the, on the left side, um, the power available through the, the PV panels and in the, the blue line you see the compressor consumption. Um, so you can whether use big batteries to have a, 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 a good autonomy, but uh, what we recommend uh, here is to uh, use ice storage for the long-term autonomy and then use small batteries uh, so that you can use the surplus energy of the day to keep on producing ice uh, or whatever your ice is, your your thermal storage is uh, uh, during night. Um, so I would uh, like to to suggest you to to think on 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 this uh, on on using ice storage because it can reduce the battery cost um, um, very uh, dramatically. I will say. And in the next slide, I would like to, to show you uh, in the sample of our ice uh, maker. So I have to told you that the ice maker can produce around 16 kilogram ice per day, but uh, this doesn't happen every day, right? So in this uh, diagram on the left side, you can see um, the daily uh, horizontal irradiation uh, in the X axis. Uh, so uh, from one to eight, yeah, on the right side will be very sunny. And uh, on the um, uh, Y axis, you see the mean ambient temperature. So uh, let's say if we start in the top right side, you will say if the day is very sunny but hot, you can produce around 10 to 12 kilogram uh, ice per day. And if you go down, uh, um, uh, to the to the uh, bottom right side, then you will see if the day is sunny and cold. So with 15 degrees uh, ambient temperature, you can produce around 18 and 20 kilogram ice. Um, and the, the same phenomenon as you see, if the, the day is not sunny, um, that the ice production reduce. Uh, and on top you see uh, in red points and uh, for Tunisia and, and uh, blue points for Kenya and green for Colombia. What is the typical uh, days on those locations? So you can see you will have a mixture of different uh, uh, weather weather scenarios and depending on those weather scenarios, your, your system will behave uh, um, according to the expectations of the user or, or not. And that's why uh, it is also important to to consider these uh, weather fluctuations of the of the location you are dealing with. Next slide, please. I would like to uh, show you at this um, this slide our design toolbox for uh, solar refrigerators and ice makers. Uh, it is available uh, under the, the link you see in the in the uh, in the bottom uh, in Energypedia. And there you can introduce the weather data, uh, the system type that you have, if it's a nice maker, a refrigerator, uh, with battery, without battery. You enter also the cooling demand, so how much food you are cooling down or how much ice you want to produce and the cost of, cost of the components. And then you get there the um, a sizing of the PV panels uh, that are suitable for your refrigerator. Um, and uh, also the same for the batteries and you get uh, a kind of economical feasibility. 
and then the next slide. I hope I don't have so many sl uh, slides. Yeah, I'll come to my uh, last slide. I will be <laughs> uh, quick. Uh, just our recommendations for the design challenge is to consider an overall solution. So not only uh, considering the refrigerator, for example, also including PV panels, thermal storage, electrical batteries, uh, inno innovative control strategies, for example, and also to understand the cost of the solution from the beginning and uh, its sensibility to weather conditions, uh, user requirements, cooling capacity, um, and also why not thinking about production volumes. Uh, so what is the cost for the first prototype or for the first 10,000 units? And uh, kindly consider also the use of mass production components that are already available in the market. Uh, don't forget about thinking on modularity. Um, so, for example, local assembling uh, and maintenance, and uh, of course, uh, which business model we would work for its distribution in, in rural areas. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Victor, um, for this very good presentation, and thanks again, Harini, as well, um, for your presentation before. So, we got a few questions, but a very limited amount of time, so I hope I'll be able to cover all of them. Um, so first question, uh, you both mentioned um, last mile distribution as a big challenge and obviously in the whole off-grid industry it is a challenge, but for refrigeration it is an even bigger challenge, right? So um, the question would be, um, could you tell us more about it and Harini in particular, could you explain how MCOPA gets um, products out there on the market? Um, sure. Well, um, as in, what do you mean in terms of getting the product out from a logistical perspective, or customer, as in, like, um, in terms of product penetration um, into the market? Sorry, can you say that again, please? Yeah. Um, as in, what do you mean in by um, um, as in getting products um, to the market? You mean logistically or customer penetration? No, logistically. I assume the question is about fridges being quite a fragile uh, mm. item. Yeah, good question. Um, so yes, that that too was a big challenge because um, usually our kind of direct sales agent, um, as in direct sale representative, would like you know carry an MCOPA device. Um, to, to customers and in the case of the fridge it's much harder so we um so they would be like uh taken to uh customers who have bought it uh, on a border border or like in a van it, it all depends of the location but it just means that um the kind of sales strategy um is not quite the same because you can't carry a fridge with you as a dsr to um to different potential customers so we might target um community meetings or might put it in one of our shops um so to, to essentially for people to to kind of engage with us and to be able to see the product thank you um so the next question is for both of you um could you tell us more about um different business models that exist uh, when it comes to cooling so um, one question we got was, uh, does refrigeration require distributors to get involved in the client business development, for example? But more broadly, could you also tell us about some other business models out there, like community fridges and uh, what we hear about the, cool, the pay-as-you-cool system? Victor, if you want to, to take that one first, maybe. Uh, yes, um, uh, here is very interesting in our case because we work with uh, productive uh, use. Um, we differentiate between the business model at, at uh, of, of the agricultural value chain and the business model of the technology supply. Um, I think you, your question goes more for the business model of the of the um, uh, agricultural value chain in this case of farmers, for example, and uh, we have uh, observed there that the the income generation potential of cooling is very high. 
uh, not only by increasing product quality, but also to uh, get access to new markets. So the farmers and uh, cooperatives are more flexible when they have access to, uh, to cooling. Um, we have assessed there in two cooperatives the business model and have found out um, uh, that we can pay back um, the, the technology uh, in around four to five years. Uh, this is too much. Um, so I think the business model at farmer level or at user level is given. We just need to understand uh, the, the, the size of the technology and the configuration. And then we need to work very hard in reducing the cost of distribution because uh, as I, as you comment before, yeah, this is the, the biggest part, the, uh, the biggest share of the cost of the technology. Um, and that's why I think we don't find in rural areas uh, solar cooling systems that are adapted to the needs of farmers. The reason is because when an in innovation has been done or a new product has been uh, uh, launched to the market, um, um, it is very difficult to sell it directly in rural areas. The, 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 the transport, the, the, the distribution, the marketing, the support, the maintenance, this is it makes the, the, the technology uh, very expensive at the end of the day. And that's why we are not yet able to match uh, the promising business models at farm, farmer level and cooperative level with the uh, business model of, uh, of the technology suppliers, uh, because they, they have, of course, a high running cost uh, to distribute uh, this kind of, of technologies. Uh, but I guess Harini has a uh, much more experience on, on this. Hello, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, sorry, if you, could you repeat the first part of the question again? The question is more broadly: Can you can you please tell us about like different business models that exist? Um, for example, community fridges or selling to communities. Um, so, if, if yeah. you have any insight, um, you don't, I can switch to. Um, unfortunately, personally, I don't. I wouldn't really know. I just know that we pitch these products um, to community, but um, in terms of the MCOPA fridge itself, um, we we haven't seen cases of. Um, say several households or several businesses buying it, I guess because it is a hundred litre fridge and wouldn't necessarily, um, wouldn't necessarily be appropriate for that business. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it makes sense since MCOPA is selling to individuals, um, yeah. it makes sense that you're not exploring other community business models. Uh, we are running out of time, which is a shame. Um, I would have loved to ask you two more questions about refrigeration. Uh, do you have a, a few maybe last comments to give to the students participating in the competition before we close the webinar? Um, sure, I guess um, I suppose, you know, if, if you do have more questions and if you are interested in this specific topic, do not hesitate to perhaps contact us and then we'll be able to um, cater the content more to, um, to, you know, to the questions that you need answering. Um, I've also included the email of, um, of my colleague, Mathe, uh, who is definitely more knowledgeable on this specific topic. So don't hesitate to reach out to him um, if you'd like to learn more. Thank you. Yes, and same, same from, from my side. Yeah, kindly contact us uh, and I will be looking forward also for, for their ideas. Um, uh, so uh, contact us not only to, to uh, make questions, but also to send you, to send us your, your ideas. Um, I think there are many things to do in this area. Uh, many innovations need to come into the market. So I think, um, your support is here, is needed. Thank you very much, Victor. Um, thanks, Harini, as well. And thanks to both of you for your presentations and your insights today. Um, we'll meet again tomorrow for the next webinar. Um, same time, I will be focused on cooking. And we'll hear from uh, our partner, Burn Manufacturing, a Kenyan-based company um, developing uh, efficient cook stoves and, and recently uh, looking at e-cookers as well as uh, our 
program partners, uh, Modern Energy Cooking Services, a defeat funded initiative. Um, thank you to all of you and uh, have a very good day. Uh, bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.